shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Will you please be seated for a few moments? And on behalf of our rector, Kate Branson, and the congregation of St. Stephen's, I'd like to welcome all of you, dear friends and family. I have to admit right from the start, I did not know Mary Ellen was not going to pretend that I did. However, I had a few very close moments with Randy and Cheryl, and they filled me in on all of the details. So we'll take it from there. We'll be referring to her as Mary Ellen and as Mary throughout the service. I hope that's okay with everybody. I also want you to know that you're at home here, 
So if you're a baby crying in the back there, or if you're an adult crying in the front there, either way it's okay. We're glad you're here. On behalf of the family, thank you for being here. You're also invited to your reception after the service. There's going to be down the stairs or down the elevator, and in the uh, fellowship hall immediately below us here. So please come and tell lots of stories and enjoy the other stories that others have for you. Our service will continue then on the bottom of page one in your bulletin there. The Lord be with you. And I'll say it to you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Mary. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as companions on our earthly pilgrimage. Your boundless compassion console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Ruth. Do not press me to leave you. To turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us for eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to things that are seen, but to the things that are not seen or unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that in the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be put in our, on our heavenly dwelling. If, needing, if needed, by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan. We burden not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by this life. He who is prepared for us, this very thing is God, who has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. The word of the Lord. Does that make a difference to anybody? I was just thinking this would be a real blessing to the people in the back. People up in front have to hear me, though. You guys all familiar with Gallagher? The guy that used to explode watermelons? We call this the Gallagher Row because you get spit on here. In the scriptures, it talks about how all the things written in the Bible are written for our understanding and for our learning. And I believe that so much because Harry Truman, a president of the United States once upon a time, uh, Harry Truman used to say, the only thing we don't know is the history that we haven't learned. And I thought there's so many stories in the Bible that help illuminate not just the lives of the people that are in the Bible, but our lives and our relationship with each other and our relationship with God. So when I was talking with Gordon and Harriet a few days ago, there was a moment when Harriet lit up and she said, Ruth, it's the passage from Ruth. We need to have that passage from Ruth where it talks about wherever you go, I'll go. Wherever you live, I'll live. Where you die, I'll die. And may God it, it spiced it up in the lesson there a little bit, cleaned it up in the lesson a little bit, because it said, may the Lord do thus and so and more if I keep away, if I depart from these words. In other words, it was Ruth's way of saying, I'm going to do these things, and this is my pledge to you, God, and to you, her mother-in-law, Naomi. So if you'll excuse me, how many people here, this is a really unepiscopal thing to do, how many people here do not remember the story of Ruth in the Bible? I've got several honest people. How many people don't realize the story of Ruth but are not willing to put your hand up? <laughs> Just check it. Okay. It's only four chapters long. I encourage you to go home and read it because it's a beautiful story. But I'm going to give you the done translation of it which is not at all an authorized transcription of the Bible. But this is the one that makes sense to me. The story of Ruth starts with Naomi, a woman who's married to a fellow by the name of Elimelech. Say that three times. 
Naomi and Elimelech have two sons, and there comes a famine in the Holy Land that strikes the people living in Bethlehem and around Bethlehem. That's where the family was from. They decide during this famine, they're going to go across the Jordan River to the land of Moab because they're going to be able to make a living there. They're going to be able to survive there. So Elimelech, Naomi, and the two boys head over to Moab. While they're there, the two boys fall in love with two women from Moab. Duh, it's going to happen. So as they're there, they have this wonderful marriage, a wonderful life together, and then Elimelech dies. And then one son dies, and then another son dies. And Naomi is at the point where she's, you've just got to imagine that she's thinking there's this huge dark cloud over her head with all of these horrible things happening to her. And she says to the two daughters-in-law, I'll use them over here for a moment. She says to her two daughters-in-law, you all stay here in Moab, find somebody who's going to marry you and love you and raise a family with you. I'm going back to Bethlehem to be back with my family, to be back with my people. And one of the daughters-in-law says, yes, and gives her mother-in-law a kiss and a hug and stays there in Moab. Ruth is the one that says to her mother-in-law those words that we heard a little bit ago, where you go, I'll go, where you live, I'll live, where you die, I'll die, and there I'll be buried. In other words, Naomi has this wonderful pledge from her daughter-in-law, Ruth, wherever you go, I'm going to be there with you because I love you. So Naomi says, thank you. The two of them pack up and go back to Bethlehem to live. And for the next couple of chapters in the story, Ruth eventually falls in love with a young man named Boaz, who happens to be related to Naomi's late husband. Are you with me still? Okay. So Ruth is in love with Boaz. The two of them get married. And, and it's a wonderful story about how all of this comes together. And you would think if it ended there and, and it said the word of the Lord, and we'd say that's wonderful, thanks be to God, but it doesn't end there. Because it goes on to say that Boaz and Ruth become the parents of a young man named Obed. You don't have to remember these names. Obed and his wife become the parents of a young man named Jesse. Jesse is the father of David, King David. And because of this foreign woman's participation, her love, her caring for this family, the whole world is changed. All of history gets changed because it's through this wonderful but foreign but Gentile woman that King David is eventually born. And because of that love that Ruth had for her mother-in-law and eventually for her husband and her kids, I suppose, because of that love, the history gets changed. So I was thinking, there's a reason why Mary Ellen liked this story. And she used it a lot with her connection she had with the Rebecca's and the connection that she had with the Odd Fellows because the story of Ruth is a big part of the life in those two organizations. And I'm thinking that it fit in with Mary Ellen's life because Ruth wasn't a person of flashy faith. She wasn't a person who would say, I'm going to be at church every time the church doors are open. She was a person that just lovingly cared for other people who loved them and served them. And I found out at the dinner we had a little while ago, and then I had that confirmed for me just a little bit ago, she fed them. And the gift that Mary Ellen has was this quiet life of faith, to care for others, to share that with other people, and in feeding and caring and loving and serving, this was the life and the witness that Mary Ellen was able to give to the world. And you've got to imagine that God is thinking what was going on with Ruth was going on with her too. A person who very simply, very gently, and without any fanfare, loved people and cared for them and served them and gave to them and fed them. And I think if we think this is a story that tells us about Ruth, 
tells us about Mary Ellen, but I think it's also God's invitation to say, this is a life for you too. If you can share in that giving and caring and feeding and loving the people around you, you will have done everything that I need for you to do to change the history of this world. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, and please join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed, our statement of Christian faith. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the singing of the Lord's Prayer.
Would you please stand as you are able? And we offer the prayers of the people. Please respond by saying, hear us, Lord. For our sister Mary, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Mary and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Mary, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in our Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Would you please be seated to enjoy the anthem, P.A. Yezu.
Would you please stand for the commendation? And after the service, I'm going to ask people to remain for the postlude because it's beautiful. And then following the postlude, I'll be escorting the family downstairs for our reception. Please join us for that event. And as I said, tell lots of stories, share lots of love. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Mary. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for the post lead.
Now you're on your own. What was the favorite dinner that you remember? Just too many of them? <laughs>